right. I'd like to welcome you to the uh, Meridian Idaho Parks and Recreation Commission meeting for the date of June 14th, 2023. It's 5.33 p.m. May I ask for roll call? Yes, thank you. Keith Bevan. Present. Jennifer Bobo. Present. Dom Gelsimino. Present. Joe Greer. Ellie Hood. Present. Mandy Roberts. Present. Mike Medellin is absent. John Nesmith is absent. Brandon Simpson is absent. Thank you, we have a quorum. Can I get a motion for adoption of the agenda? Mr. President. Commissioner Gelsimino. I'd like to make a motion to adopt tonight's agenda. You have a motion, do I have a second? Commissioner Greer, second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, agenda has been adopted. Uh, can I get a motion for approval of the meeting minutes for last month's uh, commission meeting? Mr. President, I will make Mr. a motion Robert. to approve the last meeting minutes. Seconded. Pardon? Seconded. Okay. Commissioner Gelsomino, second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, the uh, previous meeting minutes have been adopted. We will now move on to the agenda. First item on the agenda is uh, announcements and upcoming events with Shelly Houston. Hello. Hello, happy Flag Day commissioners. Um, gosh, early in the year, I struggled to fill a piece of paper with upcoming events. And this time of year, I have it so crammed full, I fear leaving things out. But I do want to point out a few highlights on this upcoming uh, event calendar I gave you. Um, specifically, up in our initial point gallery, we currently have a display from the Idaho Watercolor Society. It's 52 individual artists, each which have one of their you know, finest pieces on display. And we've also included uh, a, a large piece by Dwight Williams. He was a watercolor artist who was kind of the founder of the gallery and its, its curator for many years. So I'd encourage you to pop up to the gallery if you can. Um, the Saturday market continues from nine to one each Saturday here in front of City Hall. So if you could support it, that would be nice. We're doing our thing where we're alternating Sparklight movie night in Settlers Park with Friday night concerts and Kleiner Park. And so far they've each had one, one event. And the movie was well attended. The weather was a little, the weather's been a little iffy. So both were a little soft attendance wise, but we feel like we'll, we'll gain momentum as we go. Um, tomorrow night is a movie in the park. And then the following um, Friday will be the Bree Kleiner Park Live. And it's a group, I think it's called the Notables. Everything from ACDC to Journey to Billy Idol. So they sound like kind of classic rock with an edge. Brian Adams, you know, John Cougar, Mellencamp that kind of vibe. Um, Meridian Dairy Days is sneaky up on us quickly. It'll run the 21st through the 24th. The actual parade will be um, the evening of the 24th. That's a Saturday. So traffic could be a little hairy downtown. Or if you'd like to attend the parade, give yourself time to come and find a good spot. Um, they've announced a coffee with the mayor date for this month, Tuesday, June 27th. And we'll be over at Deja Brew Bistro right over in Generations Plaza. So it's a very convenient location. Everyone's welcome. And I won't really get into the rest, but just let me tell you, we're already planning the um, you know, Meridian Art Week and concerts on Broadway and 4th of July and everything's popping. So um, again, I also gave you a standalone flyer for these concerts in Kleiner Park. They're the ones that could use the most love because it's, we're kind of resuming after several years of not having this concert series. I'll tell you those shade trees and the shade canopy we put over the, the band shell in Kleiner Park, it's really transformed that venue and it's really quite lovely and charming and comfortable. So it's time to give that a try again. So take your friends and neighbors and check out Bree Kleiner Park Live. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Okay, we'll see you out and about at the special events. Thank you, Shelly. I, I would like to point out two things. Trunk or treat. I know we're six months away, but five months, but trunk or treat October 26th and the Christmas lights parade uh, looks like December 1st. So everybody, those are two big events. So let's keep those in mind. 
thank you, Shelly. I mean, this is what makes Meridian awesome is just so many events for everyone of different desires and wants and needs and likes and thank you. All right, moving on the agenda, we will move on to, there's no old business. So we'll move on to new business. And the first item is uh, Meridian Parks and Rec Department Classes and Camps Update with Jenna Fletcher. There was a presentation. Okay, I'll wait. All right, Dom, you have a presentation for us? I do not. No, we, we all just see the name Dom Gelsomino on our screens. <laughs> huh. <laughs> yep, sure. We'll pause.
Okay. <laughs> Hi y'all, so I'm Jenna Fletcher. I'm the recreation coordinator over class in the camps. Um, you can see our April date. I think that's when I originally was supposed to come to you guys. So I apologize for not changing that. So this just gives kind of a brief overview. Um, so <laughs> this is just kind of a brief overview of our history for the past couple years. Um, obviously in 2020, you can see we dipped a little, not a big deal. We powered through, we were still able to run camps, which is great. So um, I know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, this is just a closer revenue breakdown. You can see our classes through 2022, $240,000. And then just, we kind of separated into our Camp Ridamu, which is our summer day camp. That was just one camp we ran also. So we did like six weeks at one site and then five weeks at another site, um, just because we only had that much staff. Maybe it's something to do with that. Check, check, check. See? Hello, hello. <laughs> okay, can you guys hear me now again? No echo. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long <laughs> How many
just like green so you can take people out, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I know. Test one, two, to see if this echoes back. All right, we still have a, you know, a missing section of the screen, but we seem to have fixed the echo and I think you can see the PowerPoint. So I think we're able to press forward until he gets here. So we'll turn it back over to Jenna. Sorry to anyone who's watching online. <laughs> okay, we're back here. All right, so 2022 last year, like I said, we only had one camp split it up in a couple of weeks at two different sites. Um, still totally fine. We still had over 400 kids that were able to attend, which is always great. Um, we we're also able to do our outdoor adventure camp, which is super popular. It fills up within 20 minutes. We open it. Um, six, six week of camp, six weeks of camp, um, and that's our one. You know where we go rafting, we go to Bose Basin, um, we go kayaking and paddleboarding at Quince Pond. So super popular. Um, and then our 2022 classes, over 5,000 people and people participated in our classes. So everything from photography, yoga, line dancing, jazzercise, martial arts, um, and then of course all of our youth classes. So 2023, so what we're doing right now. So currently this is our first week of camp, summer camp. We started two days ago, so 35 more days left. Um, we are now back at two sites, which is great. So we'll do Discovery Elementary and we have Sienna Elementary, which is awesome. Um, 40 to 50 kids-ish each week. Um, and I have some great staff there. So we'll do our field trips. We go to the Meridian pool, which is always so fun. Um, and then our park days. So um, no outdoor adventure camp this year, unfortunately. Wasn't able to find camp, which is kind of a bummer, um, but we just kind of look forward to next year. And then all of our activities through the summer, tennis being at Mountain View, Heritage, and then Settlers Park uh, in the morning. Pickleball, we even have youth pickleball this classes. We have a camp next week that's full um, over at Rita Husky, which is a lot of fun. Um, and then our normal like gymnastics, fencing, et cetera. Classes we offer, like I said, all those art classes, all of our art classes have now moved over to the Meridian Pool. So they have a nice, beautiful space up there in that upper section, which is really great. So the locations, a community center, um, home court. And then, like I said, we were just able to have some classes over at the Meridian Pool. Um, obviously our much smaller classes that don't need a lot of move like room or for movement. So our art, our little pallets instructors have moved over there um, and they love that space. And then we have another room kind of to the side, um, which next week our Lego classes will start. So, and they'll be in there. This is just kind of gives you an overview of what our community center looks like. Um, this was just January through May, 2022. Um, it looks very different right now with classes basically from like 9 a.m. all the way to like 8 p.m. almost four days a week. Um, so super full, that's what we like. Um, we like to keep kids busy, like to lo offer lots of stuff. So, and then home court, you guys have all been to home court also, still super full. Um, I know Jake is knocking on the door at me, seeing if they can get some more pickleball people in there because they're always banging on the door for him to let them come into, but this, <laughs> that, that place is booked and busy with us too. And then the, 
quick question. Yeah. What are the normal operating hours for home court? Let's see your calendar. Is it eight to 10? So our classes typically start like around 930. Um, and then home court opens up, I think like at 6 a.m. The summer hours right now are from seven to nine. And then the winter, they open like at six, like yeah. Jenna said, um, through 10. So six to 10. Yeah. And then our classes are, if an instructor has a class that they want to start earlier, um, we do have a key code that they can use just kind of like what we use the community center. So all of our instructors have a, a, a four digit code that is for them. So, so yeah. And then the pool, like I said, just the pool over there right now is just our little pallets class and our Legos class. So lots of room in there that we can still use, but we'll also we'll use that room for trainings. Um, it's also another room that lifeguards can use when stuff isn't going in there to get a little break too, so. Um, our activity guides and how people hear about us. Um, Shell is the one that helps me tremendously with our activity guides. I just send her the content of everything and she's the one who puts all that beautiful guide together. Um, our email blast. Oh, and we don't print our activity guides anymore. So we stopped doing that in 2019. Um, and looking at my numbers, they haven't, numbers haven't dropped in participation, which is great. So our numbers are still trending up. So just because a pe person doesn't have a hard copy, they're still going online and still looking, which is great. And if someone comes into city hall or if they ask, we, of course, will always print one and we always have some on hand too. So, um, and then we send out an email blast. I mean, I, I'm sending out one every other day almost for upcoming classes, tennis classes, events we have. Um, and this hits like 20 plus thousand emails. Um, so we have a very wide range of emails that we hit and that goes to everyone. Um, and then social media, Shell does all of our social media, um, just getting the word out there. Current happenings, like I said, I'm in the depths of camp right now. So <laughs> we're running at two sites um, and then I'm putting together our fall guide. So even though camp summer just started, our summer classes just started either this week or last week, um, I'm looking forward to our fall, which will take us through September, 2023 to December, 2023. Um, and then of course ev on everyone's mind always is looking for a new community center space. So we are still fingers crossed that I still continue to get to use my current community center, um, but we're always looking for what we're doing. And that's all I have. Questions, comments, concerns? Go ahead, anyone? Yes, yes, commissioner. Thank you very much. Just, you had briefly mentioned something about the outdoor adventure camp wasn't able to happen this year. Could you explain a little bit more why that was? I yeah, we were even just struggling just to get camp for just my our two summer campsites. So I prioritize our summer campsites, our day camp, just because it can host more kids. Mm -hmm. um, I think total, I had 17 applications for the whole summer for people who applied. Oh, okay. And out of that 17, I was able to hire, so well, starting with 14. And then out of that 14, 12 continued. <laughs> so okay. um, I mean, I, I just can't take everyone also. People are, these are people working with kids. Um, so I, I, I have to be a little picky when it comes to, okay. Come to our so staff. You just didn't have enough staffing. Then, yeah, basically. definitely. Okay. Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Well, thank you. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Next on our agenda is the, uh, Meridian parks pool update with Mr. Garrett white. All right, commissioners, thanks for having me tonight. This will be kind of quick and short, to be honest, because I was just in front of you guys back in February with a pretty good pool update. Um, this is just kind of an update on what we are currently doing and what we just got accomplished from February until now. So that being said, we hit every target that uh, we aimed for this year. We had the pool cover off on time, dewinterized on time, Swim team trouts on time, lifeguard instructor training all on time. Um, we opened last Monday, June 5th. Um, positions hired, we were able to hire um, 62 lifeguards. Um, we went from 40 to 62, 63 if you count Willow. So, because she does, um, has all the qualifications obviously to guard. Um, on kind of the assistant aquatics coordinator, we did hire one, but that position actually got a full-time job somewhere else um, just before we opened. So we kind of split those duties between uh, two or three other the senior lifeguards, other returners. Out of those 62, 63 lifeguards, um, 42 are rookies. 
So brand new, never guarded before. And to be honest, I was in, involved in a lot of the interviews and all 62 that we hired, not one of them was late to an interview. Everything was great. I mean, they were just great kids, you know? So uh, we ended up hiring them all and we, the head of maintenance, we have two, uh, two head of maintenance, but that they're also guards. So they're calculated into the 62 number, if that makes sense. Operations this year, bather load, 250 is our maximum capacity in that pool. And like I mentioned back in February, the pool capacity is a mathematical equation that um, it's hard to understand, but um, that's, our, that's our capacity. As of yesterday or yeah, yesterday morning, um, we had about just under 1,800 kids signed up for swim lessons, which is a pretty good deal. So 1,794 kids. And last year, like I kind of mentioned back in February, we implemented the um, swim test before kids go swim from public swim and stuff like that. And we were actually getting an award because of that uh, at the AIC awards um, next Thursday. So kind of a cool, cool thing. What does AIC stand for? Association of Idaho Cities. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Uh-oh, my screen. Uh -oh. I jinxed it. There we go. So I showed this schedule back in February as well. And I did also show this to council when I went to them. Now the red numbers up there, the number of guards, you know, the 45 to 55, this is 55 to 65. We're kind of right in the middle of that third square over there to where we are open on Saturdays for public swim from four or from noon to four. So this year uh, we were able to add that weekend public swim. We don't have the evening public swim yet. And it's interesting because a lot of those guards, yes, we have 62 guards, right? But a lot of them are involved in soccer, swim teams themselves, other things to where they can only work a specific number of hours. And if you've ever done schedules for anything and everything, it is extremely difficult to put that jigsaw puzzle together um, to make everything work and to make sure people aren't getting over hours, stuff like that. Um, so Willow does a great job with that, but we were able to, you can see, I kind of have a line through that 7.30, 9.30 PM public swim. We just <laughs> didn't have enough guards to quite make that happen. Um, if we can, we will, but right now as things are going, we, we don't see that happening, but we are open on Saturday. And hopefully we can get to the 65 plus and make all the other stuff work. Pool projects are all completed this spring. Um, you can kind of see the old diving board there and compared to what the new one looks like. Um, and then we also have the pool rim painted um, around there. You can kind of see the bottom left screen and then new umbrella fabrics. So last year, middle of the summer, we had a kind of a micro wind gust that came up and blew two of the umbrellas down and up and out of the holes there. Um, kind of tore some of the the fabrics and stuff like that. And they were, they were old and faded. So we ended up having to get new ones of those, but they all turned out great. So um, as of right now, the pool is operating, going great. Um, all the kids that are working lifeguards are awesome. Um, I didn't have any pictures of this, but we uh, had a pancake feed for the pan for all the lifeguards last Friday. Um, Mayor Robert came out and helped flip pancakes. Steve came out, helped flip pancakes and Councilman John Overton came out and flipped and I did all the mixing, which is probably the most important part of that, <laughs> but um, not gonna lie, but we did, we did a lot of stuff there, but it was a lot of fun. Um, the chocolate chip pancakes went fast, went pretty quick, but overall it was really good. The lifeguards really appreciated it and it was neat to see uh, Councilman Overton and the mayor and Steve flipping pancakes and stuff. So um, that was a pretty good success and uh, looking forward to do that again, maybe next year. So with that, that's, the quick update on how today and how the pool's going. So I'll stand for questions. Mr. President, may I ask a question? Yes, Commissioner Roberts. I was just, uh, well, first of all, I was gonna ask you what your secret recipe was for the pancakes, but chocolate chips. The chocolate that, chips. That's, yeah. Yeah. Um, but one of the things I was wondering about is just with the growth that we're experiencing in our city, um, are, you guys, are you guys, I'm sure you're monitoring, you know, the attendance at the pool and when you're hitting that capacity and, you know, is it getting more frequent and just kind of curious about that, you know, and also like the number of swim lessons, is that going up year upon year, that kind of thing? That's a great question. And right now, yes, we kind of monitor, we monitor every day the attendance, right? Because we don't want to go over our capacity. Capacity at 250, 
it, we're, we haven't even come close to that this year, although it's been kind of rainy here and there. This yeah. Year. We haven't hit the hottest part of the season. But even last year, um, we did hit some of our capacity last year at 150 based on the number of guards and stuff we had. But this year with the amount of guards we have, we we have more people on deck where they're Good. supposed to be and things. So, so yes, we're monitoring it, but we haven't even come close to the 150. Okay. I think yesterday during camp day, we had 137 was the, the top. But when it gets hot, it's over 100. We'll be close to the 200, 225, I'm sure. So. Yeah historically talking with ward and willow who's been there for the last five to six years um they hit their capacity periodically in the summer and it's organized chaos on deck you know just because <laughs> there's so many kids in the pool and stuff but um but yeah so well, that's we like do monitor it um when it comes to what was the second part of that question uh just swim lessons are those going up to or so swim lessons they've always basically kind of maxed out okay that makes sense yeah. so yeah I asked the same question. Why can't we grow these things? You know, this and that. And Willow educated me on the fact that um, we can only offer so many of the guppies level one, because we only have so much shallow area. Yeah. Right. And so on. So um, yes, we, we monitor that and it, it does fluctuate towards the end of the summer. It start kind of starts to, to lower a little bit just because everybody's went through the swim lessons early in the season. And as a parent, I know with my parent, my wife and I, we wanted our kids swim lessons early in the summer things like that to learn because you're going to visit the pool again in the summer, right? So um, yeah, they have a little bit of potential to grow in the, in the last session or so, but there's still a lot of kids and registered. Mm -hmm. so, okay, thanks. Yeah. Any, questions? Any other questions? Are you still looking to hire lifeguards? I mean, is that not just an always ongoing effort? Um, right now, no. So once all the trainings take place, is it the two week long to three week long training? Right. And right. right now we don't mainly because Willow is running around <laughs> yeah. crazy and she's right. the trainer. Right? Okay. So she's doing schedules and working and with all the rookie guards, she's trying to be more of the head guard on deck a lot this year. So she's yeah. trying to a lot of coaching. So she doesn't have the time to do the training. So once May starts, we're kind of stop the hiring process for guards just because it's kind of a short season. Right. Okay. It's a good question. Though. Okay. Any other questions, commissioners? All right. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you much. I am happy to leave. I have to go to the dairy board meeting yep. right now. So my updates are right. pretty, pretty good. I'm done. So thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you guys. Thanks for all you do. All right. Uh, next item on our agenda is a Tully Park playground replacement update with Mike Barton. Good evening, commissioners. Um, so you all know that we've replaced our parks are getting to the age where um, they're, they're just, some of them are at that age where we need to start working on them. We're still building new parks, but some of the old parks need to be refurbished in certain ways. And last year we replaced the playground in Chateau Park. We, a couple of weeks ago, we just opened a new playground at Bear Creek Park. And so this year we are funded to replace the playground at Tully Park. Um, this is what the current playground looks like. Um, it's hard to remember if you if you don't go there all the time. So you can see that it's there's a lot of open space that you know the um, it, it's twenty almost twenty five years twenty something years old. So it's getting up there in age. Here's another picture of it. It's just kind of it's ho hum. You know, back in the day, it was state of the art and fun and bright and colorful. And um, but one of the big things that we're having is that it's starting to have some significant issues as far as structural decline goes. Um, we have posts that have uh, rusted below the bark level, and um, you can see where the screwdriver can penetrate in there. The plastic fatigues, it cracks. The replacement parts are made to order. So if you have broke, we get a broken slide, we have to order that slide. They have to make it. They don't have it on the shelf. And oftentimes the slide you get, the, the footing or whatever, it doesn't match up right. So you end up doing modifications. So it's a lot of expense. It's a lot of, a lot of um, effort to go through for something that's just kind of declining anyway. So those are the reasons that we're replacing it. So we've been working with uh, Great Western Park and Play who did the um, Chateau Park Playground. And we've developed a concept that um, includes both um, 
uh, features for five to 12 year olds and two to five year olds. I'll keep going and then we'll pause on this. Thank you. Um, and um, it takes up quite a bit of, of space. We're not modifying the existing playground, uh, the pit where the bark is, but a couple of things that we are doing is we've put a continuous row of swings across the back, not just a couple of swings. Um, we have four swings that are as tall as you can get right now. They're 10 feet tall. Um, and then a um, ADA swing, a couple of um, mommy and me, and then an expression swing that has two seats on it. So two people can swing together. But one of the things that we're doing is we're bringing in bonded rubber in off the sidewalk so that if somebody is in a mobility device, they can they can access that playground right there because underneath swings, you get those great big divots and, and you know, and the guys end up shortening the chain, which shortens the travel and it's not as fun. So we want them at the right height. And um, so that's just one way to, um, to keep that. So, If you want to pause for one second, we're, we're, we're yep. getting close to something. So I'll hang out. We're trying to get it to stream better. Good. Um, so there's a picture of the new playground. Um, one of the things that we did with this is that we incorporated some um, universally accessible features into this plague play area that it's not 100% universally accessible. It's all ADA compliant, but it's um, as far as being universally accessible, somebody um, it, that's in a mobility device can wheel in uh, on that ramp and then turn and then go over and play alongside their friends. And it has that rocking thing that um, that those individuals can get in and still have fun, but it also has some of the dangerous components that kids that um, aren't um, confined to a mobility device enjoy, um, as well as swings. And so we've done, we've, we've kind of created a, a playground that can be more or less a hybrid of um, universally accessible and um, all ADA compliant. And we've got some height and, um, so there's just another another color, and really, what we need help with tonight is choosing colors. Um, we've got um, we can back up, and then I've kind of got these side by side that um, would really love feedback on color. Everybody has um, we presented this at an all staff meeting, and there was like, I like this, and I like that. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to ask you guys, you know, what are your, what's your preference? You had to choose. Anyone feel free to speak up. <laughs> I like B. I, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to like B as well. Uh, I think it's because what do they call that feature that kind of looks like a pyramid, Mike, in the back there with all the bars on it? Oh, the ropes. Those yeah, are those are ropes. Okay, I I think it that just kind of pulls that out, highlights it, makes it more attractive, and I think we're all kind of like in B, right? I like B. Yeah. I'm super excited about this one because that that feature in the back on the right side. But I've been to one, another park with it. It is so much fun. So um, I, I'm glad you say that. Thank you. And um, Commissioner Bevan, I remember about a year ago, you said I was, I was in Napa and they had a trampoline. That was me. Oh, that was you. Okay. So we tried to get a trampoline. Yeah. But they've, they've discontinued those oh. due to safety concerns. Oh. So Bummer. we tried. There are several parks in Napa that I've been to that one has that big tall thing one has the pendulum swingy 
thing. Okay. And then one in the back corner, does that thing spin in the left side by the yes. swing? Yes, it does. That is super popular as well. So I'm really excited about this park. Yeah, it's a no, a little kid. It's it's a really cool playground. I've got a um got a video, but I don't think the sound works with YouTube. So you can get just a little bit of a different perspective on um, some of the some of these. This this comes with with sound, but um, it doesn't work on YouTube. So kind of gives you a fly through of the playground too. So you can get a, and that's the blue one that we like. Yeah, it looks good. So it seems like there's a lot more play capacity for kids compared to what's there now. Two to five, five to 12, universally yeah. accessible, swings, ropes, yeah. tall Great. slides. It's cool. Good question, Mike. I know in uh, previous ones where we've replaced equipment, there's the company that'll take the old equipment and take it to other countries. Is that going to happen with this one or? Cool. All right. Good. In fact, um, company just picked up the other two a couple of weeks ago. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Got them all drink wrapped and in the trucks they went. So, yeah. Nice. I believe the Bear Creek Playground is on its way to Honduras at the moment. Nice. And the, uh, the, the, head, the executive director of that organization is going to be in town a couple of weeks from now and has you know, set up a meeting with me. So I look forward to, to getting together and talking about what's next. Cool. Yes. says it's on maybe grab the other mic it's not coming through the speakers okay that one's good <laughs> um i don't know if this is a question for you or not but seeing the picnic table it made me think of do you guys have a problem with parks with wasps do you have a way to kind of or jackets yeah kind of the we, we do i have a, have a problem do you bait, yeah do you have something to can of spray. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's no secret. We do get a lot of um, um, yellow jackets and wasps, especially around picnic shelters, around the garbage cans, because there's, there's sweet stuff and spilled. So yeah, we do. Any questions? Any questions? Did you say when? Sorry, uh, Mr. President. Yeah, good, Go good question. So um, we are ready to place the order. It was um, kind of in the waiting based on color selection. So I'll place the order tomorrow. Takes about eight weeks to get in. Uh, we're bidding the labor. We're, we're hopeful to have it in this fall. The only thing there's the, the bonded rubber is um, you have to do it when it's the temperatures are above 50 degrees. So we got to get this stuff in and, and have the bonded rubber, but a little bit of a juggling act because it's the summer. I mean, it's already, it's still raining out and it's almost July. So yeah. I'm going to try to try to have it all in and open this fall. That's the goal. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other questions, commissioners? Thank you. Right. Thank you, Mike. All right. Next item on our agenda is Parks Department fiscal year 2024 budget with you, Mr. President. And we're going to pause for just a second. They got one more thing to try before we try bringing up the next PowerPoint. So hold tight one moment. <laughs> 